Okay, so we're going to do an optimization problem today where we're going to minimize the distance between the point 2, 0 and the curve y equals radical x on the Cartesian plane. So I'm going to write down what I want to do, which is I want to minimize distance. And I'm going to draw a picture, a rough sketch of the situation. So we got our x, y plane here. I'm going to sketch y equals radical x is going to look something like that. The point 2, 0 would be somewhere over here. And basically what I want to do is find out where would the point on y equal radical x be so that the distance between 2, 0 and that point is a minimum. So if I'm eyeing it up, it looks like it would be about there. But who knows, right? Any point on y equals radical x, we're trying to figure out where does that point need to be so that we can minimize the distance. Maybe I'll call the length of this line segment d. So that's basically the situation. All right, so now what is this point? Well, it's the point I'm trying to find, so I'm going to label it as x comma y. So now in optimization problems, I like to write down what I want to do, whether it's maximize or minimize some quantity, and then draw a picture if appropriate, which I have done. The next step is, well, if you want to minimize distance, it would make sense that you need a distance function. So how do I come up with a distance function? Well, distance of what? It's the distance of this line segment. So lucky for us, we know how to find the distance of a line segment on the Cartesian plane. It basically comes straight for the Pythagorean theorem. It's going to be distance equals the square root of the change in x's squared. So x minus 2 squared, quantity squared, plus the change in y squared. So y minus 0 squared. And honestly, basically, that's just, that's just the Pythagorean theorem. If I was going to kind of draw this triangle right here, right, this length right here is y minus 0. This length right here is going to be 2 minus x or x minus 2. Uh, it doesn't matter if I call it 2 minus x or x minus 2 because I'm squaring it, right? Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. But a lot of people just memorize the distance formula as this. It's basically d is representing the hypotenuse and you're solving for it in a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so what do I want to do? Well, I should probably clean this function up. Right now I have it in terms of two different variables. Uh, and that's not always desirable when we're doing optimization problems. So, okay, well, what do I do? How do I get y in terms of x? Well, lucky for us, we know that y equals radical x. So I can just go ahead and put radical x right in there. So I'm going to get distance equals the square root of x minus 2 quantity squared plus radical x minus 0 quantity squared. But radical x minus 0 is just radical x. So I'm going to get radical x squared, and then all of this under the square root. Now I can clean this up a little bit underneath if I wanted to. I can go ahead and, and foil it out and distribute this and maybe combine like terms, and, and maybe I'll do that. So d of x, I can actually call it d of x now because it's strictly in terms of x, is going to equal, if I multiply this out, I get x squared minus 4x plus 4, and radical x squared is just going to be x. And that's kind of a nice thing, because I notice that I have some like terms here that I can combine. The minus 4x and a plus 1x, that's going to give me a minus 3x. So my d of x function becomes radical x squared minus 3x plus 4. And this now represents the function that I want to minimize. It's the distance of this line segment, the distance between some random point x, y on radical x and the point 2, 0. This is what I want to minimize. Now, where you go from here in an optimization problem is kind of up to you. I like to make an interval. So in other words, an interval for my variable. And my variable is x. Well, what does x represent? x represents a point on y equals radical x. So what can that be? Well, I'm basically asking you what the domain of this function is. What can x be on this curve? Well, it can be anything that is greater than or equal to 0. So my interval is going to be from 0 to positive infinity. I have something like that going on. All right, so 
what is it that I want to do? Well, a couple things. First off, since I have an open boundary in my interval, I'm going to want to take a limit to that boundary. But before I even go there, when we do optimization problems, we do know that eventually we take the derivative of the function we're trying to optimize. So I would have to be I would have to take the derivative of this radical function and that's not a big deal. We know how to take the derivatives of radical functions, but it just so happens I can make this problem a little bit simpler for myself. So in other words, instead of minimizing the distance, I'm going to minimize the square of the distance. So I'm going to call this function capital D of x and it's basically going to represent little d of x squared. So if I squared this radical, I get x squared minus 3x plus 4. And people always say, well, why can you do that? You know, how is that going to give you the same answer? Well, maybe I'll, I'll sketch a little picture over here. All right, and I'm just going to kind of make some numbers up. Say we have this situation, and I'm going to draw in three line segments. This would be one line segment, this will be another line segment, and this will be another line segment. And say I actually was able to know what these points are and I calculated their distances. And it turns out that maybe this distance is 3, this distance is 2, and this distance is 4. So the minimum distance here would be represented by this middle line segment. Well, what would the square of those distances look like? Well, let's take a look. If I squared 3, I'd get 9. If I squared 2, I'd get 4. And if I squared 4, I'd get 16. And the observation to make is that the square of the distance is also minimized right here. So in other words, if you're minimizing the square of the distance, you're also finding the point that minimizes the actual distance. So if that's the case, heck, I'm going to minimize the square of the distance because then I don't have to deal with that radical function. And that's kind of the logic there. That's how we can get away with that. All right, so let's go back to the problem at hand. So now I realize I want to minimize the square of the distance. This is my function. My interval would remain the same. That's not going to change. All right, so I'm still looking at 0 to infinity for my interval. And so now what do I want to do? Well, a couple things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the limit of d of x as x goes to positive infinity. All right, and that might have got cut off a little bit, so let's bring that up a little. Okay, so as x goes to positive infinity. All right, so what's that going to be? Well, this is a polynomial function right here. Limit of a polynomial, as x goes to infinity, I'm going to go ahead and take the limit of the highest degree term, commonly referred to as the end behavior model. Which kind of makes sense because that's the term that's going to dominate for large values of x. So to take the limit of this thing, as x goes to infinity, that's going to be equivalent to the limit of x squared as x goes to infinity. And that's going to give me positive infinity. So why'd you do that? What does that tell you? Well, that tells me a couple things. It tells me, first off, there is no absolute maximum, which kind of makes sense because I can just keep moving this point over and over and over, creating a line segment that gets larger and larger and larger. So this tells me there's no max. It also tells me that there's going to be a min, and that min is either going to occur at this endpoint of 0 or at a critical point. And I'm actually going to write that. So I'm going to go ahead and write, let's see here, bring this back down. I'm going to go ahead and write, all right, it's because of that limit that I took. Therefore, d has no absolute max, but d will have an absolute min occurring at either an endpoint or a critical point. So let's go get the critical point. And how do I do that? I take the derivative. So I look at d prime. d prime of x is going to be 2x minus 3. The derivative is fairly simple to get there. So now I'll get the critical point. You see where the derivative is 0 or undefined. It's not going to be undefined here. So I would just set it equal to 0. And some simple math. Add 3 divided by 2. I get x equals 3 over 2. So this is my critical point. Now what I need to do is I need to compare 
the squared distance at zero, which is the endpoint, but also the squared distance at this, which is about, uh, well, which is three over two, one and a half, right? So here I go. So I'm going to test my endpoint first. So if I test my endpoint, I basically want to do d of zero. So d of zero, if I plug it into this function, zero squared minus three times zero plus four is four, which that's no shocker because if this distance is two, right, if that's the point two zero, the distance is two, so its square distance should be four. So we kind of were expecting that. Now I also want to test my critical point. All right, so I have to do d of three over two, or 1.5. And so I'm not going to do that in my head. I'm actually going to use a calculator to do that. So I'm going to do 1.5 squared minus 3 times 1.5 and then plus 4. And it turns out I'm going to get 1.75. So 1.75. So now remember what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to minimize distance. So I now have to compare these two values. Well, 1.75 is less than 4. So that means this is where my minimum distance is going to occur at. I'm going to have a minimum squared distance of 1.75, and it happens when x is equal to 3 over 2. So maybe I should, should state some of this stuff. So I'd say, all right, um, we'll say there is an absolute minimum distance. Now, what would the minimum distance be? Well, if this is the squared distance, then the minimum distance would be the square root of 1.75. Right? If the square distance was 4, it would be 2. How do you do that? You take the square root of it. So there's an absolute minimum distance of square root of 1.75. All right, And then we'll say at the point 3 over 2, comma, what would the y value here be? So if I found the x value, to get the y value, I just plug it in here. So that would be the square root of 3 over 2. And if that's what I make my point on the curve, then I will minimize the, the distance to the point 2, 0.